There was a time in the life of Carol Waitiwa when it was as bleak as it gets. And God sent him a friend. And this friend came in a very unlikely package. And it's the same for us. We might miss the person God sends to us because they don't come the way we expect. This is how this happened. So I'll give you a little backstory. Carol Waitiwa, who would become John Paul II, when he was a young man, during World War II at this time, by that time, he lost everybody. I mean, it was during the war, he's working at the sodium factory, and he comes home, and his dad, his last living relative, and his closest friend, he, he comes home and he's dead. So he has no one left, no one. And this was such a low point, such a low point in his life. He said, at 21, I have no one. When he came to his father's body, he spent that night just crying over his body before he told anybody or had anybody come. And things were so bleak. You know, the Nazis had taken over. A lot of his friends had been carted off. He has, everything is looking bleak and down and he has no one. So the Lord sends him a really important friend. He sends him actually two things. I'm not going to talk about the one, which is he ends up with the, the book about Mary by Louis de Montfort. And that's like a lifeline for him. And he gets this relationship with the Virgin Mary. And, and this is, it's a lifeline. But he sends him another person. The man's name was Jan Tyronowski. And this guy was a real character. So he wanted to be a recluse, but he couldn't because he had to take care of his, his mother. So he, he's a job, he's a tailor, but he has an extreme, extreme developed prayer life and a connection with mysticism, but he really wants to keep to himself. He's an introvert, as, as introverted as someone can get. He doesn't like talking with people. And this is the person that our Lord sends to Carol Oitiwa during his darkest, deepest time of his life. So this is how it kind of went down. So the Nazis were carting off all the good priests who were able-bodied, anybody who was healthy. They carted them off to the concentration camps or killed them. And they didn't allow gatherings of young people because they knew that young adult gatherings, they had the, they didn't have uh, children to be responsible for. They weren't, they were more free to resist or to create an underground or, or do those things. So the Nazis made a point of really denying any young adult gatherings for that reason, because they would be the most feared. They could, they could, solicit change if they organized, right? More than other groups. Anything that was Catholic, which was Polish culture, was being ripped apart and taken from everyone. So there were some priests left. If, if there was a priest left at a, at a church, it was because he was sick or very old and couldn't really be effective or do much. So the priest, a, approaches Jan Tyronowski and asks him to take care of the young adults. Now, Jan is kind of an odd duck. He's thought of as an odd person. He's scared to death to speak to young adults especially. They think he's strange because he kind of is a little bit. And, and it's not what you would think. You wouldn't think that he should be a young adult leader or that he could rally young adults or give them what they need. But because of this deep spirituality, because of his interior life and the Holy Spirit working in him, which he learned all this from John of the Cross, so from the Carmelites, he's got a, a Carmelite interior life. He, he just goes to the back of church and he goes to mass and he just observes people. 
and he's watching and praying. And nobody really cares or notices that he's watching and praying. He's watching people come, he's watching people go, and he's receiving or waiting for the Holy Spirit to show him who might be young adult leaders because he's not going to be a young adult leader himself. He's going to choose young adult leaders, mentor them, and let them organize these groups. There's these prayer groups that get organized, and what Jan does is he mentors the, the leaders. And there's several groups that form, and his group is, of course, the leaders he's forming, but he, he meets with them individually. Well, what happened in the case of Karawaitiwa was that he had lost his father, he had no family, he has a vocation, doesn't know it, he, he doesn't have a, a, a deep interior life yet, you know, it, that wasn't there early on. I mean, there was a deep faith, but he doesn't have this developed interior life. And so with Jan mentoring him, he becomes like a father figure. He becomes a spiritual director, a lay spiritual director. He becomes a mentor and teacher, and he helps Carol see his vocation and realize it. He helps Carol see this deep interior life. And John Paul later, he will write about this. And in writing about Jan Tyronowski, he says, he showed me a world I didn't know existed. So he opens up all of this. And when you see that someone is completely stripped and of everything like Carol was, and shown this spiritual reality, the unseen world, and someone to guide him in that, walking in that. It's what made the Pope who he was. And we saw evidences of this when, when John Paul II would pray. You know, we'd see he'd pray and he'd, he'd groan and he'd talk to Mary and he'd talk to Jesus and he was oblivious to the world around him. Like the, the physical world would seem to fall away and he'd enter into this spiritual reality and people saw it. And you know, when he would travel around, it was hard for his people who had schedules, you gotta be here, you gotta be there. They, they purposely rerouted him away from chapels that had the Eucharist. Because if he went by a chapel that had the Eucharist, he just followed his heart. He'd be drawn into there and then they'd be behind schedule because once he started praying, there was no, there was no stopping him and there was no interrupting him until it was done. The package, the friend that came to Caraway Tiwa, he didn't expect it to be someone like Jan Tyronowski, the, 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 the strange guy, the strange introverted guy that he had no idea the depth of his spirituality, but there was a depth there. You just don't know. When, when we need a friend, let the Lord pick that friend. It might come in an unusual package. It could be somebody who's not even close to being like our peer. Don't be afraid of a friend that's younger than you because spiritual maturity doesn't rely on chronological age or older than you or in a different economic situation than you are in, or they don't necessarily have to be able to identify with your life. What they have to be able to do is identify with, with Jesus and his love and the Holy Spirit who will guide that friendship and fortify it in ways and bring fruit from it. So, and, and even if we're not going through a hard time, any time in our life, we need each other, we need friends, and the Lord provides them. So let's pray to our guardian angel and see who, who he's going to send. Pray to Mother Mary. She's our mother. She's their mother too, whoever that friend is. And then if you have a friend that's dear to you, that, uh, that you can share deep thoughts and that is in spiritually 
you're there. You know, it's not a superficial friendship. It's a deep friendship in Christ. Then value them and thank God for them and pray for them. Pope St. John Paul II and Venerable Jan Tyronowski, pray for us.